Hello everyone and thank you for coming to this data center facility project workshop. My name is Mark Dancy. I'm the OCP Ready Lead, an OCP team member and a member of the data center facility project. And I'd like to talk to you today about the work stream to revise the color facility guidelines for the deployment of open compute project racks and the site assessment that's used as part of the OCP Ready program. Now I'd just like to give you a brief history of why the guidelines were originally created. Well, back in 2017, it came to the attention of the OCP Foundation that OCP users were finding it difficult to find suitable colo facilities to host their OCP gear. The end users had reported that a typical colo facility had access floors that couldn't support the weight of a densely populated open rack which could weigh as much as 1,500 kilograms or one and a half tons. Also, the colos couldn't provide enough power capacity for each rack, which needed a minimum of 6.6 .6 kilowatts or even up to 12 and a half kilowatts. So the OCP Foundation asked the DCF project to create a set of guidelines that would be useful to both the colo solution providers and also OCP users to help them understand what the must have subsystem requirements would be and also the attributes that should be considered when hosting OCP hardware. And these guidelines were published in October 2018. So what's the purpose of the OCP Ready program? is twofold. For colo solution providers, it allows them to carry out a self audit so that they can understand their readiness to host OCP open racks and IT gear. If the facility meets the requirements that were created by the DCF community, they can then pursue recognition and certification with the OCP Foundation. For OCP users, it allows them to review the attributes of a co-location facility so that they can determine if a colo solution provider has a facility which is suitable to accommodate their open racks. So why are we revising these documents? Well, we need to make sure that the guidelines keep pace with OCP hardware innovation and continue to be relevant. Also, that the must have attributes and considerations for the data center's physical infrastructure requirements that are listed in the OCP Ready Site Assessment need to be reviewed on an annual basis so they continue to meet the needs of OCP users. So the guidelines are split up into sections. We have chapters for each of the main subsystems. These are architectural, cooling, electrical, telecommunications and pathways. And we need to develop these further. Also, we'll need to add additional chapters for safety and compliance and also sustainability. And within the chapters, we're looking to add reference designs and layouts for pods of open racks and also one line diagrams for example electrical systems. And for within the appendices, we are going to be adding some new accepted designs and retire rack types which are not available to source at the moment. So I'd just like to run through some of the main chapters and some of the submissions that we've had that was part of the review process. On the electrical side of things, we've had a submission that we should add a reference design for a pod. For example, in this photo, this is a, 
a great example from uh, Rital in combination with Schneider and Circle B. And this has been implemented at the main cubes AMS01 Colo facility. And this is also an OCP experience center where users can test out their applications on OCP hardware. We've also had a submission to include information around unpacking and storage areas and the size of these in relation to the, pair, the, the square meterage of the white space. Now within the cooling chapter, currently we have guidelines for air cool racks only and we're looking to develop this further and we've had a submission to that we should have a reference design for layouts which require large airflows because of the increase of the density of hardware within a rack and these being in white spaces where there are solid floors. Also one of the uh, one of the very sort of important bits of work that's happening in one of the projects uh, that's the rack and power project and the sub project for advanced cooling solutions and we're looking to use that work that's within uh, that's coming from that project within the data center facility and within the guidelines so that we consider the requirements the must have and nice to have needs of various types of advanced cooling solutions these being for immersion, cold plate, and rear door heat exchange. And if you would like to hear more about what these requirements could be, please turn, attend the workshop, uh, which is later on, um, called Managing Barbecues in Data Centers with Sustainability and Adaptability. And that's being presented by Don Mitchell and Tim Chambers. And within this slide, you can see couple of examples of on the right hand side uh, with uh, Submer we have an immersion cooling system and on the left hand side from Rital uh, we have the uh, uh, a liquid cooling solution as well. Now within the electrical chapter currently we don't have any examples of one line diagrams for different electrical system designs that could be implemented. So we're going to be adding diagrams for this and Schneider carried out some great work in a white paper and we're going to be looking to use that uh, content within the guidelines. And the one line diagram that you see here is for a hybrid arrangement where traditional and OCP loads are housed within the same facility. Also, earlier on, uh, Facebook shared with us their experience for how to uh, improve electrical system stability within the, within the data centers. And the content from that will also be added into the guidelines. And lastly, but not least, uh, information about electrical grounding, which we don't currently have, is going to be included in the new revision of the guidelines. Also, and importantly, there's some three more chapters that have been suggested that we should be including in the new guidelines. First one being sustainability. An important aspect that is not used widely and that is using the waste heat from a facility and that could be used for heating greenhouses for plugging into district heating systems district cooling systems and guidelines around how that can be achieved within this document would be really useful so that's an area that we're looking to add into the document. Also on the circular economy, which is also part of the sustainability uh, part of the guidelines, um, we, 
we have many sort of recertified open racks being installed in the uh, in facilities and uh, that will support the circular economy and we'll be adding some guidelines around how that can be achieved also within a new chapter uh, that we're going to call safety and compliance there's some really good feedback that we've had uh, coming out of the USA uh, where there are certain things that need to be considered when deploying OCP open racks. One of them is that when racks are delivered that UL, UL VO and FCC certificates are available. Also that if racks are going to be installed in the California region and uh, in the state of uh, state of California that earthquake protection should be installed uh, e.g. seismic kits uh, for zone 2 and zone 4 support and also something uh, that um, that's come out of uh, what you should do to prepare a rack prior to delivery and that's with the cable to the PDU now if the rack is going to be uh, going to be installed in a colo where there's an access floor and the electrical presentation is within the access floor then the PDU cable generally will need to be extended uh, to allow for that to be uh, to be connected currently the the recertified uh, racks um, are configured so that they plug in overhead so the cable is is shorter and therefore a consideration should be made to adjusting the length of that uh, PDU cable off-site before it's delivered because there's a restriction on modifying cables of that type within a facility in, in the USA. Also we've had a submission where, uh, where we've been asked to provide some guidance and information for inlet air temperatures which go beyond 27 degrees and how much time that can be allowed for without affecting reliability. Now within dependencies, again, we've had some submissions around highlighting the OCP ready requirements, which is a matrix and a checklist, which is used and can be used for uh, assessing a facility and that matrix is used and and mirrors the scorecard which is in the OCP ready site assessment and uh, it's, we've been advised that we should make that more prominent within the guidelines document because it's a very important and useful part of the uh, of the guidelines also within the uh, we have a matrix as well currently for the rack types um, we're going to be adding the open rack version 1 and retiring the CG open rack 19. Also, we need to add references to other sub projects uh, within the data center facility and also projects and sub projects outside of the data center facility uh, project which are relevant to the data center facility such as from the rack and power ACS and telco project groups and also we've had some really good technical discussions throughout 2019 uh, around what the structural floor load specification should be uh, on air quality and also advice around housing lithium ion batteries within the white space I just I'd just like to talk about the one of the other documents that we're revising and that's the OCP ready site assessment which as I said uh, mirrors the uh, requirements matrix within the guidelines and we've gone through a review period and that and that has now ended and we've recently updated the site assessment and now it includes site operation standards to the considerations part of the site assessment for an optimum 
operation standards, we selected the OCP critical facility operations framework guidelines. And acceptable standards are the BICC 00929 data center operations and maintenance best practices, and also other frameworks which could be proprietary or in house processes. They are also acceptable. And they're the only changes that we've made to the OCP Ready Site Assessment. So I'd just like to put it out to the audience uh, that we have today. And if you'd like to ask some questions or if you'd like to make some comments to the, uh, you know, the work that's been done so far on the, uh, the revision of these guidelines. Thank you very much for coming to this data center facility project workshop. On this slide here, we've got a number of links to the, the data center facility project, the wiki, the mailing list, how to join as an OCP member. Also, we have a link for the OCP Ready, the facility recognition program, and the marketplace where you can find all of the OCP ready facilities listed. And also, if you'd like to contact either myself, Mark Dancy, or the VP of Channel, Steve Helvey, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, please get involved. Um, and uh, also, links here to the project leads uh, of the Data Center Facility Project. And thank you to them for their hard work. And um, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, it's Mark Dancy. If uh, anyone has any questions, um, please uh, put them forward. Um, so we've had a question from uh, from Joshua. Um, I understand. Uh, so, yeah, it reads. I understand the guidelines are compatible with BICC 002019, um, and, uh, and that makes mention of this as well. Joshua was. Um, Will we see similar linkages to other uh, standards uh, such as EN 506, UTI, TIA 942? Uh, yes, there are uh, there are now uh, references to OCP within uh, the BICC 002 revision. Um, currently, we haven't had any sort of um, contact uh, directly with uh, EN 506. Or UTI. Um, there has been some discussion with TIA 942 um, during their uh, addendum for edge data centers, um, although um, uh, currently uh, there hasn't been any reference put to, uh, regarding OCP within that. But hopefully that may may change. Um, but no, we don't currently have any in linkages, um, but um, Quite um, willing to consider that uh, within the project. Um, if anyone, you know, Joshua, you'd like to join um, uh, one of the calls, then uh, and put that forward as a discussion point. Then uh, that certainly would uh, be uh, would be great to great to have. Um, we've had another question from Alan Howard. Um, have any new color facilities been certified recently? Um, well, Giga Data, well, Giga Data Sensors uh, was, uh, I think was the last one. Um, we've got quite a few. Uh, we've got quite a few in the pipeline, um, and um, hopefully, we'll have uh, one from from the A part of, uh, from Asia, from the APAT region. Um, that's be the next one coming up. Um, but none, none certified recently. Um, we are working with um, with some uh, colo providers that are building new facilities um, where they're going to be colo ready, uh, so OCP ready. Um, 
obviously through COVID-19 um, restrictions that uh, some of those builds uh, have been uh, slowed down in their progress. Um, but um, we're certainly um, having have an impact on, on new builds um, as well. So we've had a question from Mark Kuna. Um, do you talk directly to the big players in the market, such as Equinix, NTT, um, Digital Realty, uh, so they're prepared for enterprise requests? Yes, we're, all, we're always keen to talk to, uh, to the bigger players. Um, uh, Equinix uh, was part of the uh, uh, OCP community at one point, uh, but uh, they uh, they're no longer part of the community now. Uh, hopefully, they'll come back into the fold. Um, certainly, NTT. Uh, we are in. You know, we are talking to NTT. Uh, very important uh, work going on um, over in Germany at the moment. Um, and uh, yes, certainly NTT um, certainly has big influence um, alongside there. Um, you know, they're sort of global reorganization with uh, the purchase of um, Gyron, um, eShelter, um, so very important player. Um, the digital Realty, uh, we haven't had any contact from them at the moment, but uh, certainly very welcome to have them on board um, as, um, as the enterprise uh, uh, take, take on the OCP hardware and, and adopt it. So yeah, always keen to, and always open to any player. Um, we're open to all, and uh, uh, no one's too big or too small um, to, uh, to be part of um, OCP and uh, be OCP ready. I had a question from Joshua. Um, is certification conducted by a third party or by uh, OCP? Um, and I take it OCPF, so I take it that's the um, the data center facility. Um, we don't have um, the certification conducted by anyone other than the co-location solution provider themselves. Um, it, it's a self-assessment. Um, Part of my role is to help the um, Colo solution provider with um, understanding the requirements, um, working, working them through the process. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so it's a self-assessment process. And, and that process, um, once the self-assessment has been completed, it's presented to the uh, data center facility community uh, during a project call. Um, and that's the review process um, within OCP. Um, that then, uh, once we've had that project call, it then uh, is uh, out for review uh, for a, a short period. And then following that, the uh, assessment then goes to the incubation committee who, um, who rubber stamp it. And then at that point, they can uh, become an OCP code solution provider, have that facility re recognized as OCP ready, and then it's uh, marketed, uh, they can be marketed on the uh, OCP marketplace. Um, so that's, that's pretty much how the process is. Anyone on the call or no, is anyone, uh, any color facility that would like to join the program, please uh, get them to reach out to me. I'm, I'm here to help them through the, uh, through the process and uh, we uh, welcome and open to all colos to, uh, to enter the program. We've also had a question from John Laban. Um, will there be a similar sub-project for the telco spaces? Um, I think he's alluding to, um, to called Central Office re-architected as data centers. Um, Currently, uh, we don't have a sub-project uh, in the pipeline for, uh, for CALD um, and for um, you know, transforming uh, central offices and telephone exchanges, but 
Uh, most certainly, uh, that would be uh, a very useful sub-project. Um, and uh, and in alignment, um, yeah, with what they're doing with CBA, uh, I think would be uh, would be fantastic sort of cooperation. OCP already cooperating and part in partnership with ONF, um, so this would be um, yeah another another sort of excellent sub project. Um, but um, we need uh, we need people to join us. We need people to uh, collaborate and uh, participate and contribute. Um, currently. Uh, we don't have any um, anyone sort of um, uh, here uh, within the DCF um, wanting to kick off that, but um, yeah, certainly um, yeah, willing to accept anyone you know anyone into the project, and uh, they wanted to start their sub project, then um, we're uh, we'll be good to good to have them along. Okay, so I think that's uh, that's all the questions. Thanks very much, everyone, uh, for joining. I hope you found the presentation of interest, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, virtual summit. Um, goodbye for now, and um, see you at the uh, the next summit. Thank you very much. Bye bye.